Welcome to Learn the Electrics and this Tech Tips video. Spurs on spurs in electrical installations are sometimes a necessity in order to extend a circuit. But how can we install them safely? The first question that we should ask ourselves is, what is it that we need to consider when extending circuits and adding spurs? The answer to this question is that we need to protect the cable from the effects of overload. The fuse or circuit breaker is not there to protect the appliance that is connected to the circuit. The breaker is there to protect the cable. If the appliance has developed a fault sufficient to cause an overload, then the appliance is probably scrap anyway. All we can do now is protect the cable from damage so that we don't need to rewire and protect against the effects of fire. We have left off RCDs in the drawings that follow for simplicity. All new socket and lighting circuits in dwellings must also have 30 milliamp RCD protection. Here we have a typical ring circuit and we will assume throughout the video that we are using standard grey twin and earth cable for the fixed wiring. Cable number one leaves a 32 amp circuit breaker. It visits all the sockets of the circuit and returns to the consumer unit as cable number two. If we look at the individual conductors, we can see that the line neutral and CPC or earth all form a ring around the area being served. A radial circuit as shown here has only one cable leaving the circuit breaker at the consumer unit and it stops at the last point being served. It does not return to the consumer unit. And we can see here that all three conductors visit each point and then stop at the last one. Radial circuits do not have to be socket circuits. Here is an example of another radial circuit, a water heater. A cooker is a radial circuit, so is a shower. Before we move on, let's look at the maximum current that can be put through a cable before the cable begins to overheat. We have shown the popular cable sizes or cross-sectional areas in the left column and these values are specific to twin and earth cable. The centre column shows the maximum current for reference method C or clipped direct. The rightmost column shows the maximum current for reference method 101 where the cable is above a plasterboard ceiling and covered with more than 100 millimetres of loft insulation. When we choose a cable size we should always start the process by calculating the maximum design current or IB. What has the appliance been designed to consume? A water heater might be a 3 kilowatt model that draws 13 amps of current. Now that we know the maximum amps we can choose a circuit breaker or fuse and for this example we will choose a 16 amp breaker. It needs to be at least 13 amps. 16 amps nominal current is the stated rating on the device itself. The current rating that is printed on the fuse or breaker. And because we now know the breaker or fuse rating, then we can choose a cable that takes at least 16 amps. And in this case, we would choose 2.5 millimeter cable. The table shown previously tells us that 2.5 millimeter cable has a rating of 21 amps. There is an equation for achieving this correct balance and it is shown here. IB, the design current, must be less than or equal to IN, the nominal fuse rating, and this must be less than or equal to the cable rating IZ. Always start with IB, then decide on IN and finally choose IZ. This table shows some popular sizes of fuses for domestic purposes. We should always choose a fuse or breaker that is close to but not less than the design current. Let's now look at ring circuits in a little more detail. 
Here we have a typical domestic 32 amp ring circuit. It is all wired in 2.5 millimeter twin earth. But hold on, the table showed us that for reference method 101, we cannot put more than 21 amps through it. So how can the 32 amp fuse protect the cable? Well, because it's a ring, it is effectively two times 2.5 cable. We will get a sharing of power along each leg. So it is effectively a five millimeter cable. So how can we add a spur socket to the ring and know that it is safe? We can install one extra socket, a single or a double, to each socket that is already on the ring. One and only one to each socket. A double socket counts as one accessory. You cannot install two singles instead. And the cable from the socket on the ring to the spur must be 2.5 millimeter cable minimum. The same rule applies to a junction box on the ring. One accessory, either one single socket or one double socket and 2.5 millimeter cable. What we cannot do is to take another spur directly off the first spur, either singles or doubles. The regulations do not permit direct connection of spurs on spurs. With additional sockets, we may inadvertently overload the cable to the first spur. If we want to add spurs on spurs, then there is an approved method to do this. We must make the first spur off the ring a fused connection unit, shortened to FCU. This FCU will be fused at 13 amps. The cable from the ring to the spur will be 2.5 millimeter, just the same as before. But now the cable after the FCU can be 1.5 millimeters if you wish. 1.5 cable will take around 16 amps before overheating and the FCU is fused at 13 amps. Now we can add as many sockets as we need. We can never exceed 13 amps and we cannot damage the cable. Obviously, we must be sensible and take diversity and loading into account. A spur can also be taken direct from the circuit breaker that is in the consumer unit. At Learn the Electrics, we have seen this done several times where the consumer unit is located in the garage and a spur has been taken off to provide power to a single or double socket in the garage. Again, this will be in 2.5 millimeter cable. Gas central heating boilers need electrical power and this is often taken off a socket circuit in the kitchen or utility room wherever the boiler is located. A fused connection unit, a fused spur must be fitted and then 1.5 millimeter flex can be run to the gas boiler to power it up. Again, the cable from the ring must be 2.5 millimeters. The spur must be fused at three amps or five amps, depending on the requirements of the boiler controller. A three amp fuse will suffice for up to about 650 to 700 watts. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions. It may be that the customer has had a new conservatory built onto the back of the lounge and now needs power into the new extension. If a new circuit cannot be run to the conservatory and the power requirements are small, perhaps a couple of table lamps and a CD player, for example, then this can be supplied from the existing ring in the lounge. An FCU fused at 13 amps should be installed first and then two or three sockets can be supplied from the FCU spur. Again, the cable to the spur must be 2.5 millimeter, but after the spur, it can be reduced to 1.5 millimeter if so desired. You cannot exceed 13 amps of current for that leg. But the customer also wants a couple of wall lights fitting. No problem. Install an FCU to the new circuit and fuse this at three amps. If the FCU is unswitched, then a separate light switch will be needed and wiring as appropriate installed. If the FCU is switched, it can be used as a direct light switch and wired accordingly. 
Note that the overall demand of the conservatory sockets plus lights cannot exceed 13 amps. A quick recap on ring circuit spurs. For a 32 amp ring circuit then, cables from the ring to the spur sockets must be in 2.5 mm twin and earth. Only one single or one double socket is permitted as a spur from each socket or junction box that is actually on the ring. And one socket can spur from the circuit breaker in 2.5 mm cable. When we are adding an FCU as a spur to the ring, if a fused connection unit FCU is fitted as the spur off the ring and fused at 13 amps, then any number of sockets can come off that FCU. Allowing for proper diversity and load is essential. And the cable CSA after the FCU needs only be 1.5 millimeters. An FCU can be taken off the ring to a domestic central heating gas boiler with a 3 amp or 5 amp fuse and the cable can be 1.5 millimeter flex. A 3 amp FCU spur can be taken off the ring for lighting and the cable can be 1 millimeter. Let's look at spurs on radial circuits now. A radial circuit can be installed from a 16 amp or 20 amp breaker or fuse. If the circuit is completely wired in 2.5 mm cable, then any arrangement of sockets is permitted. Even at 20 amps, the breaker will operate before the cable is overloaded and begins to overheat. Spurs on spurs on spurs are permitted and there is no requirement to install fused connection units. A radial socket circuit can also be protected by a 32 amp fuse. It may be necessary to have a 32 amp circuit in say the kitchen where there are many kitchen appliances in use. If the breaker is 32 amps then the wiring cross-sectional area CSA should be 4 millimeters. If 4 millimeters is used throughout the whole circuit then just as for the previous example we can have spurs on spurs on spurs as is our wish. But if we take a spur and only use 2.5 millimeter cable then we start to see the same rules as for the ring circuit. One single or one double socket wired in 2.5 millimeter cable can be taken off each socket that is part of the 4 millimeter circuit. If we install a 13 amp FCU as the first spur then we can install several sockets after the FCU. The cable to the FCU must be 2.5 millimeters, but the cable after can be reduced to 1.5 millimeters if required. Again, it is not possible to exceed 13 amps for this leg. And as before, if a 3 amp FCU is installed, this could supply lighting if needed. Where would we use the different size breakers? That is your choice, but often we find that bedrooms, the garage, the dining room and other circuits of low demand may only need a 16 amp circuit breaker and the cabling can have a cross-sectional area of 2.5 millimeters twin and earth. Areas needing a little more power might be supplied by a 20 amp breaker and again the cable size can be kept at 2.5 millimeters. The kitchen, or perhaps a workshop with several power tools, a welder and so on, may need a 32 amp breaker to be installed, in which case the cabling will need to be 4mm. There are many other radial circuits that are not socket circuits. An electric cooker is a radial circuit. The cabling leaves the consumer unit, goes to the point of use and stops there. It does not return. It should have its own cooker control switch mounted within two meters of the cooker. Spurs are not permitted from a cooker circuit. It must be its own unique circuit. The only exception is a socket outlet incorporated into the cooker control panel. Another example of a radial circuit is a water heater. It must be supplied on its own circuit with its own control switch and no spurs are allowed. These are generally 3 kilowatt or 13 amp heaters and are protected by a 16 amp circuit breaker with a 13 amp switched FCU as the on-off control switch. And another example of a radial circuit 
is an electric shower. Lighting circuits are also radial circuits. This simple example here shows the radial circuit going to the lighting point and there it ends. If we wish to extend the lighting circuit, either another light in the same room or even extend into an adjoining room, we can simply loop off the first ceiling rows using the appropriate terminals and take our new cable to wherever the next ceiling rose is. With lighting, we often call it a loop rather than a spur, but it's the same thing. We can also take a spur off the circuit breaker and start a new leg for the lighting. There are no restrictions on the number of lighting points within reason, as even one millimeter cable will take 13 amps using method 101, and the breaker is rated at six amps. Generally, this is a limit of about 12 lighting points, but we should always calculate for accuracy when designing. A little recap on radial circuits. For a 32 amp socket radial circuit wired throughout in 4 mm twin earth cable, then any reasonable number of spurs on spurs are theoretically permitted, taking into account diversity and overall load. A 32 amp socket radial circuit in 4 mm twin earth can have a spur in 2.5 mm but only one single or one double socket per spur. A 32 amp socket radial circuit, again in 4 mm twin and earth, can have a 13 amp FCU fitted and all cables after the FCU can be 1.5 mm and several sockets can be fitted taking load and diversity into account. A single spur socket can be added at the breaker and the cable should be 2.5 millimetres. For a 16 amp or 20 amp socket radial circuit wired throughout in 2.5 millimetre twin and earth cable, then any number of spurs on spurs are theoretically permitted, taking into account diversity and overall load. There is no need to add FCUs for additional sockets if the 2.5 millimetre CSA is maintained throughout for 16 amp and 20 amp breakers. Certain radial circuits do not permit spurs to be added. A water heater should be a unique circuit with no spurs. A cooker circuit should have no spurs. A socket outlet incorporated into the cooker control plate, however, is permitted. Lighting circuits can be extended by using the live and neutral loop in the ceiling rows. A second lighting circuit can be spurred from the circuit breaker. Because lighting circuits use 1mm or 1.5mm cable and are generally protected by a 6 amp or 10 amp breaker, it is unlikely that we will overload the cable before the breaker operates, which means that lighting circuits can be spurs on spurs. We use the term loop for lighting instead of spur. And for any circuit, we should always take the expected load and diversity into consideration. Well, we hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable. Please click on the like button below and by clicking on subscribe, you'll also have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too. We do appreciate it and it does make us feel that all our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. We also have Tech Tips articles on our website which can be found at www dot learn electrics dot com thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon